Alrighty, and welcome back. So uh, you're probably thinking that title is clickbait, and it's definitely not. We're gonna talk about it a little later in the video, but this is not a clickbait video. I don't really make those. When I said I was gonna destroy that Ferrari, I kinda did, even though it was like camera tricks. But hey, we uh, picked soap up off the ground and put it back in a bucket, so that wasn't clickbait. Uh, I'm, I'm packing some things up here. I'm doing something I don't typically do, so we're gonna talk about that. That's kind of what this video is about uh, to some extent. Uh, we've been packing up from in here. And uh, I'll take you for a quick walk around the garage because there's some cool stuff in here. And then we're gonna hop into the video, so let's do it. So that 911 is pretty awesome. Uh, it's only like 12,000 miles for that gen. It's pretty amazing. This, this car is actually in really, really awesome condition. And uh, this will be my third 911, I think, in like uh, like six or seven days. I just did two Carrera S's, and I did a 991.2 911 Turbo. Um, and then you saw that, that bike is pretty cool. So that's actually like one of the world's fastest motorcycles. It's the uh, Ninja H2 from Kawasaki. It's supercharged with 310 horsepower video coming on that one uh, in the future, so stay tuned for that. And uh, all right, enough uh, gibberish. Let's, let's get to our, our actual video today. What many of you might not know is that if you want to do some teleportation, you use the front on one Porsche, and then we just, you know, put our camera here into our little box of goodies here. We walk this over. And then we put this into the frunk of this 911. All right, here we go. And just like that, we teleport to Northbrook, which is uh, just outside of Chicago. We're real close to Lake Michigan now. And we'll close this, and you're going to be able to see what we're standing in front of. I'll turn this around so you can see it. And just like that, 992 GT3 Touring in chalk. We've got the carbon strut brakes, so we've got the yellow calipers on black wheels. It's like a satin matte finish, which is pretty cool. And uh, I love the front of these things. They've got the painted bottom part. The, the GT3 does not have that painted. It's just plastic, which is cool. It's got this cool badge up front. And uh, here, I'll flip it back around. So today, in a very unexpected kind of vlog style video, we're doing a mobile detail. And uh, this is literally my first mobile detail, I think, in six years, maybe six and a half years or something like that. Basically, when I started out, I was doing mobile jobs, and that was almost seven years ago. And I pretty promptly stopped doing that uh, for a lot of different reasons. And we're going to talk about that a little later in the video. For now, let's uh, dig in and jump into this uh, paint correction. Uh, this is going to be just a paint correction detail from status detail on this car, and then some other stuff is going to go on uh, after I leave. So basically, I'm just kind of helping out and doing a quick paint correction. Uh, but I couldn't help myself. I had to, I had to work on this as a good customer. And this is a chalk uh, GT3 Touring. And there's not a lot of these even delivered yet. So it's pretty special to be able to work on it. So let's jump into it. So because this is a mobile job, this is definitely not my highest level polish by any means. This, this was basically a level one polish. Uh, and luckily the car was in pretty good condition. So I didn't really have to do anything too wild or too crazy uh, to, you know, in, ter in terms of defect removal um, because the car was in good shape. So what we are really doing here is we're kind of doing like an enhanced version of a jeweling polish. Like we're trying to get the most gloss that we can get out of the car um, because before you put ceramic and PPF on, you want the car to be glossy as possible, right? Now, having said that, there were some sections on the car that did have some swirl marks and, uh, more importantly, had some deep scratches in the back, and we had a really bad sanding mark in the front. So I'll, I'll lay that footage over this so you can see some of those marks. And uh, we were able to get the sanding mark out completely, thankfully, because it was really bad. 
um, it was interesting because the owner of the car told me that he kind of had some interesting tracking information or he had some inside track from somebody he knows at Porsche that showed him some stuff that basically showed that there was some uh, weird stuff going on with the car where they, they knew that like Porsche maybe body shopped something during production. Like maybe they bumped the bumper into something and had to paint it afterwards. But the the paint on the front looked good and matched the rest of the car, but the overall swirl marks and sanding marks in the front bumper did not match the rest of the car. That was kind of weird, um, and I've never heard of that or seen that before in terms of them knowing that it was like body shopped in the production process. So that was kind of an interesting thing that was new to me. Outside of that, the wing on the back had some deep scratches that I think we maybe got, you know, 80% out. Um, to get them much better, we would have had to wet sand. I actually brought compound with me and I compounded that section. Um, but other than that, the entire car came out really, really nice. And this actually was the first 992 that I've worked on that had sanding marks on them. Up until this point, they were in pretty good shape, the ones I have done. Uh, G GT cars in general are notorious, in my opinion, for having sanding marks. Um, so the 992s were doing, were doing good for a while there, but we ended up running into sanding marks here. So they're not, uh, you know, it's not uh, unheard of now. We've, act we've actually seen it. Um, but anyways, that kind of wraps up that. This is the inside of it. This thing is super awesome. I love the touring. has this like weird uh, textured, it's not weird, it's cool textured uh, leather on the top part of the dash and the doors. Um, the customer added this uh, like houndstooth stuff to the center of the seat, which I kind of dig, especially on chalk. It totally works with the with the, you know, the colors and stuff of the car. The yellow stitching is great. I've seen that on a couple cars now, and I'm actually kind of a big fan of the yellow stuff, especially when you have yellow brakes, which uh, come with carbon ceramics on these cars. And I thought you guys, my viewers of Status Diesel, might appreciate that this gentleman daily drives a 911 Turbo S and 992, and his, like, fun weekend car now is a GT3 Touring. Uh, pretty awesome, right? Not many of us could uh, even imagine daily driving something like that and then having a Touring uh, as your weekend car, so that's pretty sweet. So here's a couple shots of the touring um i believe there's uh, another daily driver coming in for this guy i'm not going to say what it was uh because i did that recently on that Aston martin video and i felt terrible because i accidentally outed that guy's car that he was coming so i'm not going to tell you what it is Ooh, nice little 718 spider there so this is a super cool road i just discovered this uh by my customer's house where we're driving home and i thought why not uh, take a quick drive so this is kind of cool i'll drive you through it kind of residentially so we can't go any too crazy here if it was less residential we could probably steamroll through some of this stuff you can see lots of motorcycle people are going through here I saw a bunch on the way through here a second ago while it appears a cop is chasing that guy now <laughs> so that's why we're not gonna go crazy fast I think this is all patrolled pretty well I'll drop a link somewhere, like a box that shows you where this is if you want to drive it. I know a lot of our viewers are in Chicago. But it's pretty cool, pretty scenic for sure. Nice, nice to drive some of it's not straight, which is a lot of Chicago. This is nice and turny. And I think that's about it for that. But uh, I thought you guys might enjoy seeing that. Pretty cool. Alrighty, like I said, this video is not clickbait, so let's dig into it. So I haven't done a mobile job in seven years, and this company started about seven years ago. So pretty early on, I figured out that I didn't want to do mobile. And I think a lot of people wonder why, right? Like it's really convenient for the customer. And it is, it's really convenient for the customer. It's not terribly convenient for me, but that's actually not the reason uh, that we don't do mobile jobs. So the reason is, and for people that follow this brand, for the most part, I already know this. I'm very meticulous. I like to do things perfectly, and for the most part, I don't really charge extra for time, which means if it takes me six hours to paint correct your car, that's fine on premium package, for example. But if it takes seven and a half or eight hours, I don't charge you extra for that time. I give you what is supposed to be done to that car for premium package or for driver's package. Lots of our customers do driver's package, and that's the more expensive package that really gives me the ability to do whatever I have to do to make sure that car is perfect. So in those situations when I'm doing that, if I was doing a mobile job, you'd be robbing yourself of money and I would be losing sleep at the end of the night because I would be doing that car not as good as I could do it. When I do it in the shop, it's being done carefully and it's being done exacting and this is bespoke detailing. So everything I do, I strive to do it perfectly and it's very hard to do a perfect detail in a mobile environment. 
Um, in fact, I, I would you know argue that no mobile detailer is doing a perfect job. Perfect jobs don't happen in a mobile environment because just about every mobile detailer is doing something kind of rushed, kind of in a hurry, and you know there's the incentive of when I'm done with this, I get to drive home or I get to drive back to the shop and do things the way I want to. And that's just not the environment that we've created for this brand, right? So when you come to Status Detail, you get a perfect job and that means you leave your car at Status Detail. Uh, literally, the stars aligned for this job to be done mobile for this customer. He's an existing customer. We talked about this six months ago. And when we talked about it, we said, hey, if the stars align, everything works out and I have a free day that's basically an off day that I can come do it for you, I'll do it. And literally, we kept joking about it because literally everything came out perfectly uh, for me to be able to do that for him. And it just, it's, that it, that it is what it is, right? So maybe in seven years, I'll do another mobile job. But uh, the joke to myself really was that this is like never again. Like this was a really rare thing. I don't do mobile jobs. Don't ask me to do mobile jobs. Uh, you know, if you want me to do your car, you'll do it at our status detail shop. That's how cars are done. That's how I'm comfortable doing things. And most importantly, that's where things get done perfectly. And this brand's all about doing exacting, perfect, bespoke detailing. Uh, and that's not gonna change anytime soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure you do uh, all the standard things. Like, subscribe, comment if you have a question for me. Do not comment and ask me to do your car mobile. I will not do it. And uh, I'll probably show you some outro footage of beautiful Lake Michigan, because we are based in Chicago. We don't really talk about that very much. Um, and that's gonna wrap the video up guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.